Um, and then go for it. Just go for it and, and watch the fruit. It's easy to get comfortable in life with things that are less than God's best. We know there's more in us, but we don't want to have to stretch. We don't want to take that risk. What if it doesn't work out? What if the door doesn't open? We can get comfortable with friends that are pulling us down, comfortable with addictions, comfortable with self-pity, always thinking about what we didn't get, how we're at a disadvantage. The problem with staying comfortable is you will miss your destiny. When God is about to take you higher, there will always be this conflict, something you have to choose, comfort or calling. Are you going to stay where you are, not rock the boat, not have to stretch, not have to be more disciplined, not have to push past your fears? Are you going to choose to stay comfortable or are you going to step out in faith and take a risk? If you're never uncomfortable, you're not growing. The enemy will always tell you what you can't do. But if you'll turn down his lies, you'll hear a still small voice telling you what you can do. Well, Joel, what if I try and it doesn't work out? What if you try and it does work out? What if you take that step of faith and you go to a new level? What if it thrusts you further than you've imagined? What if you discover you can do what you've never done? You can walk, you can lead, you can live free and whole. Don't let the what ifs talk you out of your destiny. Turn them around. What if God shows up and favors you? What if doors open you never dreamed would open? What if you beat the addiction after all these years? Here's the key. If you never try, you're never going to know. There are no risk in playing it safe. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile. Nelson Mandela said, unless you there is risks. no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Some of you in a practical way have the ability to be used by the Lord in various ways, but you just don't want to take the risk, whatever the risk might be. And I would just challenge you from this parable in practical terms that where there's no risk for God, there is no reward from him. God's best for you will always happen on the other side of trusting him in a risk. That God's wonder in your life only happens in that moment when you say, God, this terrifies me to trust you with this, to believe you for this, but I choose to step into this thing and trust you for it. Anybody who's not ever willing to risk will never do very much in this world. So, get up and go. Take the risk, take the gamble, take the first step, take action. And don't let another day slip by. Like we are not just here to, to read stories and books about other people doing other things. Do you understand the difference? Do we see the irony of the lives that we often live, where we become content with these routines, where we watch, we binge watch TV shows about a life someone else is living, and we call that living. We play video games about an adventure, but we never leave our own home. We're called to an adventure. But to live this kind of adventure that God has for us, one of the shifts that needs to take place for us is moving from you know, routine to risk. Routine to risk. And so routine, maybe a better word would be rut, right? Like it's just the things you do. They're not necessarily bad or evil. They're just things you do day in and day out without ever stopping to think, where is this leading? And what difference am I making with my life? Answer this question. What would you do for the glory of God if you knew it wouldn't fail? What would you do? What would you do for the glory of God if you knew it wouldn't fail? And then the moment you have an inkling of what that might be, you know what the very next question is? So then why are you not doing it? Fear is a killer. And the most often quoted verse in the Bible, fear not. Fear is the number one barrier in Scripture that keeps people from doing what God calls them to do.
To grow means I've got to face fear. So do you value growth enough to be willing to be afraid? Or is your fear avoidance so high you're willing to pay the price of stagnation? Because growth involves risk, and risk means fear always. Choice is simple. Face my fear or avoid my fear. Become passive and stagnant. You know, a lot of times we want to guarantee first that it's going to be okay. But very rarely does God give the guarantee first. Because growth comes when people are willing to take a step without the guarantee. That's when growth comes. That's predicated on trust. I trust you, Lord. So here goes. You got to be willing to push the envelope and press beyond your comfort zone. You know why? Because the fears that you don't face become your limits. The way that I think about fear is this, is that fear is nothing more than an invitation to evolve. Fear is an invitation for you to become more, to broaden your horizons. Fear is an invitation to grow and to explore and find some things beyond what you have already mastered. An invitation for you to be able to evolve. And this is the thing that I have discovered is that the Holy Spirit is most active in your life when you are moving outside. You got to get outside of your comfort zone. You got to face your fears on today and say, I'm going to do it today because you've been putting it off. Anything that you really don't want to do or you're so apprehensive about it, we have a way of relegating that to the future by saying someday, one day, and one day never comes. And it just keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And God is saying, listen, you're not going to live forever. What does this mean? Here's what it means. Write this down. Growth begins at the end of your comfort zone. That's what it means. I will go to my grave believing that. You cannot, I don't care who you are, you cannot unconvince me of this. Growth begins at the end of your comfort zone. There has yet to be a Sunday where I have felt comfortable getting up here to do what I'm doing right now. This grave, and Jesus says, I came in John 10, 10, that you might have life and life more abundant, not a boring, predictable existence. So many of us are just existing rather than living. We're brought up to believe uh, you've got to stay safe. You know, don't get too excited. Don't believe for too much. The sad thing is when that comes over into our Christianity, where people are, you know what, don't expect God to do too much. Don't believe God for too much. Just stay safe. Stay in the boat. Just stay with the status quo. But the fact is that so many of us live our lives in fear, We live our lives just in what we perceive to be the safety of this little world that I can control. And we never step out and up and into the purpose of God for our own lives. Because faith is all about risk. Faith is actually doing something that we can't do because we need God to do it. And the enemy, if he can't take our soul, so if we are saved and he can't get us, what he's going to try to do is make us live safe so that we never step out in faith and do what God has called us to do. Without faith, the scripture says it's impossible to please God. And I want to please God. So I want to live a life of risk and I want to live a life of faith. If you're going to move forward, then you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone. Don't be content to just read other people's story. There's a story God wants you to live.